Hey guys, this is Simply Imaginary People and I got asked to do a little mini tutorial on UV mapping objects. So this is just an old version of my crib and what I'm going to do is I'm um, delete that way. Um, just going to go from object mode to edit mode. And you need to do this before you decimate and try and reduce the poly count. That's pretty much the last thing you should be doing. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to select A to highlight my crib and I'm going to press U and then say Smart UV Project and press OK. And even though it already has it, you'll see it has now unpacked it as a UV. So this is the UV that it's done, which is yeah. So what I want to do now is if I apply a texture to this, um, I'll show you then. The issue is like the grain of uh, the wood. First of all, the UV is quite small, and then you'll see the grain goes across here and then along here, so it kind of switches direction. And I really want it to go around, like bend with the wood. The issue is that my UV has these nice curves. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to go to File, User Preferences, Add-ons, I'm going to say Install from File, and you're going to, I don't think I have it anymore, but you're going to pretty much... No, I don't. Oh, yes. Hmm. Nope. But it's this UV Squares Masters, but it's a .py file. So you're just going to click on that and say Install from File. And what happens then is... If you go to add-ons and you search for UV, you'll have this thing called UV squares comes up. And usually it's grayed out, so you need to tick it so it's active. Now, what happens then is the just give this to show you. Um, there's a little plus up here, and if you click that, this toolbar comes up. And if you click MISC toolbar, the UV squares add-on comes up. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click L to highlight a whole bent bit, and I'm gonna say snap to access. And it's going to straighten it. I'm just going to literally go around and straighten all of them, including these tiny bits. Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't work. It really depends on how well you meshed your object. If it's a shitty mesh, it won't know how to do it. If not, literally, it's super easy. Also, obviously, if they're straight, they can be packed closer together. Your UV is smaller, and it can be bigger. That made no sense. UV takes up less room, so you can make it bigger. Just going to go around. It doesn't matter if they overlap. None of that bothers us at the moment. Just going to... This is going to take a while, because this mesh consists of like 300 parts. Uh, the floor of the crib, I want to leave that shape, because... That shape fits. Right. Maybe we should have picked an object with less, but I haven't made that many objects, so we don't really have much choice. Shortcut probably. See that some of them go upwards and some of them go sideways, which is Slightly annoying. I apologize for having to watch me do this. But there's no pause button for this video recording, so... So I'm just literally pressing L to highlight these.
weird. I'm just going to leave some of the slightly other wonky bits. Theoretically you should do all of the ones, but I just don't want to take so much time doing this. I'll just leave these side ones, just do these bits. Once you've done everything, you're just going to press A to select it all, and then go down here to UV and say Pack Islands. Uh, you're going to untick Rotate because otherwise it's going to turn things sideways. And you're going to have the margin set to 0 0.001. Right. It'll also show you which ones you obviously haven't done. Let's do the same thing. UVs, Pack Islands. Right, then you can see it packs them all nicely. Now, my other issue is that, if you can see the background picture, the wood grain goes in this direction. So I kind of want them all to follow the wood grain. Which means, all I'm going to do is I'm going to say L, and I'm going to hold Shift and L. And just, like, L click all the ones that are sideways. Obviously, sometimes you have to do this, sometimes you don't. It really depends on which kind of patterns you want to have. Right, and all I'm going to do is press Rotate, so R and then 90. So R90 and it turns. And then I'm going to do the same thing. A select UVs pack islands. And there you go. Now we have a pretty clean UV map that is nicely without much space between the parts. But a little bit of space because obviously you're going to bake it and it's going to bake around it. Yeah. So now you can theoretically go to new image on your settings for baking. I'm just going to do five samples because otherwise it'll take too long, but you can do 20. And in inclusion, I usually use one. And I'm just going to bake. Nice texture. There we go. Ignore this. I fixed it in the real one. It's just over. This is usually means that you have overlapping, so I have double verts here, but I just remove duplicates and then it's fixed. <laughs> anyway, so now you've got this nice UV map, you can image, save as image and save it where you want. I'm not going to, because I've already got it. And you can also export UV layout. So I'll just do this for the sake of it. And just save it as UV. Right, so this is pretty much what I do. Now, if I want different channels, I'm obviously going to have to make a mask for this. I'm just going to show you what the... This is what happens if you export UV layout. That just shows you where all the bits are. Quite useful. Also a nice function is if you go to UVs minimize stretch. So, And then you go to UVs minimize stretch. I don't know why it's not doing it, and then you scroll. What happens then is, say I, I don't know what, changed this vert, pulled it out, pulled it sideways. It literally minimizes the stretch of the texture, which is good if you edit clothes in Blender later. <laughs> anyway, so now say I want to have all the eight bits a different color channel. Obviously I didn't sort it very well. So what I can do, I can put sync on and I can select, using L again, all the bits. And I can theoretically trace each single one in Photoshop and make it the correct UV color, but that's a bit exhausting. So what I can do, I'm just gonna select a couple, because I can't be asked to do it properly. Select all the bits you want to be one UV, pretend that's all of them, press P and say parent by selection. So that means they are now their own group. So all I'm going to do, and I'm going to select them, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go to UVs, Pack Islands. And then I'm going to select them with A, and I'm just going to move this whole thing over. And then I'm going to go to my crib, the rest, the second group, do the same thing. UVs, Pack Islands. And then I'm just going to press S and scale it down a bit. Move it into the corner. 
and then I'm going to go to object mode, click both of my groups and join them again. Now you'll see that's group 1, this is group 2. It takes a bit of Tetris, but theoretically if you've got a nice UV, unsync it. Just pressing A to select it all again. If you've got a relatively nice UV, you can pretty much select certain parts, making sure you have them all. Okay, so it's still got attachments in there. And move them, so maybe just make a new image, otherwise I can't see what I'm doing. Scale that down a bit more, move that to the corner. Then I can move this part of this UV over here. And it literally just becomes kind of a Tetris game. But if you do it right, then you've got certain UV bits in certain corners, so it becomes easier to mask it. I'm not going to finish this because mine all has one mask, but you can literally just play Tetris and get it all to fit in. So then I could UV mask this area red and this area yellow. That's kind of if you have multiple groups. So yes, just seeing if that's all I wanted to show you guys. Yep, the only other thing was if you don't like the way it UV mapped, so maybe I don't like the fact it has this gap here, then I can Go to edit mode, just go to solid, and all I'm going to do, I'm going to select L, the part that I want done new, so this is this part, I'm going to press shift, uh, control E, and clear scenes, and control E, clear sharp, you'll see it gets rid of that blue line, which is the seam line, and I don't want it split along there, I want it just split along the corner, so I'm going to choose a line of verts, I want to split it along, which is kind of more on this outside part here, and I'm going to select these verts, can't actually see them like, okay, that's still in sync mode, nope, I'm just going to parent this so I can see what I'm doing. Go to edit mode. And I want it to UV split along here, so I'm just going to press Alt and right click and it'll select a ring. And I want the whole ring, so I'm going to Shift Alt and select the next ring. And then I'm going to press Control E again and say Mark Sharp. And now if I select the whole thing and press U and Smart UV Project, see. It's not going to split it. So now all I'm going to do is I'm going to join my two groups again, make this one visible, and join them again. Press A here and just say their islands again. There we go. Now I have this in here. It's bigger. Maybe I wanted it bigger. Maybe if I don't want it that big, I will just. I'll select these areas, shift L, and scale them to the size I want. And then I can again say UV pack island. And it's split down the middle again. Oh, because I didn't do the bottom bit. But yeah, that's kind of how it works. So literally by using this uh, control E and marking things as sharp, you literally mark UV lines, like where you want it to split, which is why this part's not complete. Okay, that was it. That's kind of the quick and dirty UV mapping.